how, where did you sacrifice? Is it, is it, we know, because this kind of, you mentioned JFK, and I think that it, it's a great comparison for anybody who has watched that film. This, this is not necessarily a documentary. Maybe it's a biopic. It, it's, it's just a great film. You tell a very, very intense story. How accurate, where, where did you sacrifice for Hollywood in the, in, in the upper breast say, you know what, we got to, we're still, we're in the business, the business of making movies. We, we got to, I know you want to make this as true to life as humanly possible, but were there any areas that, that are not accurate? Um, before I answer the not accurate, an answer to the question, because I think this is important, the card at the end of the statistic that 50% of African-American murders go unsolved, yep. that was the first thing that you could say Hollywood, the distributors, want it out of the movie. I think that, that- Hold on, hold on, hold on. That, 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 as far as I know, that is an accurate statistic. It is accurate. It, it ends the film, I think it's brilliant. Why would something like 50% because, see that, you understood and you got what, if this could happen to big, it can happen to anyone, right? It's black and white. This is not, this is not up for discussion. And that's an accurate statistic. So I was like, well, if we're not holding up a mirror on society and us as individuals, if we're not, we can't let big die in vain. You know, that's the whole point of George Floyd. <laughs> you know, it's it's justice for George Floyd is, not, is is the start of a movement. It's not just about like, you know, one individual. It's bigger than all of that. So as a result of that, that's what the card and the statistics spoke to me at the end of the movie so that you would walk away from that film and you would stop and think. Because what I'm hearing from the streets and different people that I love and respect is like, wait, this narrative that big, that happened to my friend here in the hood. That happened here to my other friend over here. Like, and and so as a result of that, the corruption and the abuse of power is so prolific that, that I was trying to shine a light on that rather than just make it big story and do it in a very like in your face way, but in a subtle intellectual way that left you something. And, you know, I don't know if it's, they don't want the controversy. I don't know if it's a political thing. I don't know if they, whatever the reasons were, that was always a problem. And I literally, it was like laying down in front of railroad tracks. I was like, it has to be in the movie. It's what the movie's about. I'm yep. like, you're losing, it's what the movie's about. Yep. But see, it's funny. They tested the movie in Atlanta to like an 85% black audience. And the movie tested 87%, which is incredibly high. And movies that have characters, uh, you know, I don't want to ruin it for people, but we're having an open conversation here. Uh, characters that pass away or anything like that, they test typically low 60s. So this was 20% points higher. Again, like the music in Lincoln Lawyer, that's the only reason that card stayed in the movie. The only reason. Because wow. the marketing numbers mean money. So at the end of the day, just like Big's murder being unsolved about greed and money and all these things, it's the same concept for Hollywood in that sense. They saw, okay, this kid wants this in the movie. We want it out of the movie. We think it's going to ostracize our audience. What do white people care about? You know, 50% of African Americans getting killed. What is the Asian kid? Well, they don't care. Why does it have to be in the movie? Why do we got to stir it up? It's about this. Why? It's not about that. We got Johnny Depp. We're not trying to make a political statement. It's all this stuff going on. And, and then when the movie tests, if you're hanging with the right people and in the right moment in time, maybe you slip through the cracks. And that's just something that sort of slipped through the cracks. Um, in answer to your excellent question, uh, there's very, very little, if anything, that I sacrificed as far as truth and integrity within the film. Because I felt that what blew my mind and upset me was after I had finally got the book 10 years later, I went on the internet. And I started doing all this research about what was the prominent theory in the world and the internet about you know, what happened to Big. And I started seeing the LAPD theories. I started seeing Wardell Faust and Greg Kading's theories and all these theories. And then I talked to, um, well, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell that story, but I talked to someone in the big community about how Greg Kading had infiltrated 
Um, you, 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 Greg Kading as the former LAPD yep. police yep. officer who had investigated the case, well, was put on the case to be a front, in my opinion, and was profiteering off of it for years now, had gotten close to some people in Biggs camp. And then later they realized, you know, guys, seems like he's putting a pretty fraudulent narrative out there. And it, it, it's, it's upsetting. Um, I was like, wait a second. So basically what's going on in the world is that a guy like Russ Poole, born out of truth, integrity, and, and, and just wanting to do the right thing and wants to get justice for Miss Wallace, the family and extended and beyond is, is legitimately focused on the case, dotting every I, crossing every T, doing everything that he can do as a human being and individual. The system is crushing him and pushing him out, right? So he's getting annihilated in this journey. And, and the upshot of how this all comes together is his narrative is lost. It's like not even a prominent narrative and people on the internet are like, no, it's false. No, it's true. It's not true. And, and basically all these other narratives are being put forth and they don't have access to the redacted files that I had through Sergio. They don't have access to the depositions. They don't have access to all the police work that I have. They don't have access to the eyewitness testimonies from the street and everything that's gone. They don't have any of the things that I'm looking at and Russ Poole's theory. And I found through Don Sikorsky, Phil Carson, the FBI agent who was the lead investigator for the FBI. He was investigating the LAPD at the time. His theory was Russ Poole's theory. So everything was accurate that Russ was doing. So I was like, well, I can't, as a version of my own journalist in this movie, I can't put this into the universe, number one, and not have it be like backed up by all the documentation. Um, you know, I can't do that. And, and, and then beyond that, it was like it, it, the word responsibility, but I didn't want to... I wanted to basically usurp the current narrative in the world through the movie so that I could bulletproof it because it was too upsetting to me that what was in the in the world of the larger community was false. Does, does, does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. And, and it leads me to my next question. Uh, and, and, and this is just a yes or no, because I want to go somewhere else. Did yeah. you ever have the opportunity to meet Russell Poole prior to shooting this film? No, because I was supposed to, and he passed away two weeks before our meeting was set, which was horrifically sad. Oh. But but for people who are going to try to poke holes in me, you got to give me 10 seconds. Go ahead. The, the date, because I know, because what I said is very controversial for people. So what's fictionalized in the movie is the stuff with Rafa Perez. I I integrated Poole with Rafa Perez, witnessing the crime that, that they have Rafa Perez doing over and over again. So I put that together. With respect to when Forrest comes to Miss Wallace and they have Shug's, like the connection of the car and the records of the car, that's an actual factual piece of evidence. I just slid the timeline. So instead of it happening on this date, I slid the timeline a little earlier. Like small, small things that would never affect the truth so they're bulletproof because I had to condense, condense the story for timeline reasons. So that's why, but I was so careful about every, I mean, you should have seen, I had a team of people, we were on set like crazy people with my producer, Jess First and Don and Christian Contreras and Sergio. We, John, we wouldn't even let actors speak words until we said, Sergio, is that right? Sergio, is that accurate? Sergio, please confirm that. And then like, it was a crazy, we, you know, we, I've never, made a movie the way we made this movie. But I, I'm sorry, I, I forgive me, I had to ask for that time because I know there are these people looking to poke holes in this narrative and questioning it. And, and I can't allow that to happen to Russ Poole's legacy. And I cannot allow that to happen to, you know, the Wallace family and estate who's gotten ahead of this movie because they know the truth. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.